Hello everyone. Welcome to the 13th lecture of the course. In the previous lectures of this module, we tried to understand the human being in depth through direct observation. And we talked about exercises one and two. In the previous lecture, we talked about the interaction of the self and the body. And we tried to understand the meaning of prosperity through this direct observation. And now we'll try to study the self in more depth. So we have been studying the activities of the self and in this lecture, we'll study the higher activities of the self. Now, if you look at the evolution of the self, it can be seen in this manner. So there is one state of the self when it is living with animal consciousness. So there may be a state when the self is active only at the level of expectation that is selecting and testing. From there, it is able to uh, develop to a stage where the desire, thought and expectation all these activities are active. But still, this is animal consciousness because the self is living with only lower activities. And imagination here is largely based on sensation and preconditioning. But the need to know, the potential to know is already there in the self. And there is a the potential to awaken to the higher activities of the self. And we can evaluate our present state and see whether we are also in this kind of state. And from here, the transformation is required. And as we have discussed earlier also, this kind of transformation is the development of the self. Essentially, the development in the entire nature has to take place in the self, in the conscious unit. And it essentially means to develop the higher activities of the self. And this is possible through self-exploration and self-verification. Now, gradually, as we go on verifying the proposals and we go on validating in our living, the higher activities of the self start getting developed. So broadly, they can be looked in this manner that the contemplation gets developed and then the understanding and determination gets developed. And then comes a stage when realization and authentication also gets developed. So essentially, this evolution of the self is awakening to the activities of contemplation, understanding and realization that is the higher activity of the self. And when this is the state, then they are living with right understanding and it guides the lower activities of the self. Now you can see that this is the way the self evolves. This is the way each one of us has to evolve. When we are saying that the development has to take place from animal consciousness to human consciousness, essentially it means this. And this is something that we are going to explore deeper in this lecture. So try to find out whether you are able to relate to this process where we are today. And if you remember, we have been always talking about two realities, what I am and what I really want to be. So I have to find out what I am, what is the current state of development of the self as it applies to me and what I really want to be. Now, if you look at what I really want to be, each one of us would like to evolve to a stage where all these activities in the self, the activities of block B1 as well as block B2 are active. And we may be at some lower stage and we have to transform ourselves. And this is what we are working for. We have discussed this diagram time and again. So these are the five activities of the self in block B1. So I've been talking about these activities of the self and these are the five activities of the self of block B1, the higher activities. And we have to understand how the self can evolve to the stage when all these activities are developed. And when these activities are developed, then they guide the lower activities of the self. So this is the way the lower activities of the self get the guidance. And these activities are imaging, analyzing, comparing, selecting, and testing, and then only our behavior, work, and participation in the larger order is guided by the higher activities of the self. So right understanding essentially is awakening to the higher activities of the self. And that is the meaning of knowing the reality. That is the meaning of seeing the reality. That is the meaning of being the direct observer. So right understanding is awakening to the higher activities of the self. And that is essentially seeing, that is knowing the essence of the reality as it is that is seeing, that is knowing the part of the reality that is definite, universal, and continuous. And what is definite, what is universal, what is continuous? So as we had discussed earlier, that the natural characteristic, the innateness and the coexistence, that has to be known, that has to be seen. 
isn't it through direct observation so right understanding is awakening to the higher activities of the self and that is essentially seeing that is knowing the essence of the reality as it is and what is the essence so if you look at the essence it is something which is definite universal and continuous and what is definite universal and continuous so as we had discussed earlier the natural characteristic the innateness and the coexistence the natural characteristic is the participation in the larger order that is the relationship innateness is the self organization and coexistence basically means that we are trying to see the reality we are trying to see the submergence so if you look at the essence of all that is to be known it is relationship harmony and coexistence and how do we come to see this we are able to see this through higher activities of the self and the activities are contemplation understanding and realization so i am able to realize the coexistence i am able to understand the harmony i am able to contemplate on the relationship only that the potential to get these activities activated has to be realized isn't it so ultimately if you see there are only few things to see isn't it nine things what are these the innateness of the four orders and these four orders are the physical order bio order animal order and human order and every order has its innateness the natural characteristics of the four orders and again here there are four things to be known and the essence is coexistence so these are nine things to be known to be understood so this is the content so think over this try to find it out whether this potential is there in you already isn't it and how do we come to know the reality it is through these activities or something else so here you will require to verify here you will require to explore a bit we have talked about this earlier but we are repeating this time and again because ultimately you have to observe the reality you have to observe this potential in the self you have to see that yes this is quite there in the self and only has to be activated so you have the potential to contemplate you have the potential to understand you have the potential to realize and that is there in the self it is not in the body it is not somewhere outside only that this has to be addressed properly isn't it now talking about the innateness and the natural characteristics of the four orders so we can see that these four orders are here physical order bio order animal order and human order the innateness of physical order is existence the innateness of bio order is existence as well as growth when it comes to animal order the innateness of the body is existence and growth and the innateness of the self is built to live coming to the human order the natural characteristic of the body is similar to the one that is there with the body of an animal or the plant so there is existence as well as growth but when you look at the self there is will to live with continuous happiness so these are the four things to be understood the innateness of the four orders when you look at the natural characteristic so composition decomposition is there in the physical order as a natural characteristic now looking at the innateness and the natural characteristic of the four orders in nature so we can see that these four orders are here physical order bio order animal order and human order and each of these orders has its own natural characteristic as well as innateness the innateness of physical order is existence that of the bio order is existence as well as growth when you look at the animal order the innateness of the body is existence as well as growth while there is will to live in the self of the animal in the human order again the innateness in the body is existence as well as growth but when you look at the self the innateness is will to live with continuous happiness looking at the natural characteristic in the physical order we have this composition and decomposition when you observe the bio order it is composition decomposition as well as nurture version now this natural characteristic of the bio order is similar to the one that is there in the body of an animal or the body of a human being looking at the natural characteristic of the self of the animal it is cruelty or non cruelty and when it comes to observe the natural characteristic of the self of the human being we can see that this is perseverance bravery and generosity so these are the eight things and if you look at the complete existence what is to be realized is the submergence of the nature in space so these make the nine things the four natural characteristic of the four orders 
the four innateness of the four orders and submergence that is coexistence. These are the nine things to be understood. I hope this part is clear. So this is the content for contemplation, understanding and realization. The content for contemplation is the natural characteristic of the four orders. The content for understanding is the innateness of the four orders and the content of realization is the submergence that is coexistence. Now, if you look at the process of knowing that is awakening to the activity of contemplation, understanding and realization. So contemplation is basically of my participation in the larger order. So coming to the process of knowing that is awakening to the activity of contemplation, understanding and realization and talking about contemplation. So contemplation is of my participation in the larger order. You can see that every unit has a definite participation in the existence, a definite role to play in the existence. And to be able to see this role, this participation in relationship with other units is called contemplation. So this is one activity of the self in the block B1 and it is one of the higher level activity. In case of human being, it means trying to see what is my role in this existence? What is my participation in the larger order, in the self, in the family, society, nature, existence. So when it comes to self, essentially participation in the larger order means participation of every activity of the self in harmony in the self, in development in the self. Similarly, participation of the self in the family, going further participation in the society, nature and existence. This is something to be contemplated. And that would mean I'm able to see what is my value in the existence. This is something that we call as human value. So when we are trying to contemplate the relationship, we are trying to look into the participation in the larger order. And we start from self and go up to the entire existence. So relationship of mutual fulfillment is there already with the human being. And this has to be contemplated. So every human being wants to be happy and wants to make the other happy. This is something that we had seen while talking about trust. Similarly, there are other values in the relationship, respect, affection, and fulfilling these values, we are able to fulfill each other in our mutual relation. And that leads to mutual happiness. Now this mutual happiness is the building block of an undivided society, a society founded on trust, respect, affection, going up to love. And this is something that we naturally aspire for, to have a society which is undivided. But you can see that to realize an undivided society, I have to work upon myself. I have to develop the self. And that would essentially mean developing the activities of contemplation, understanding, realization. Now with this, I can see that I have a definite role to play as a human being. Then my desire is to fulfill that definite role. My desires become definite. So definiteness means that every time my desire is guided by the higher level activities. Isn't it? So presently, if you look at the desires, they may be unguided. They may be enslaved by sensation of preconditioning. And that's how there's no definiteness. We have contradicting desires. We had conflicting desires. And then there is a lot of conflict and dichotomy in the imagination in the self. And we'd like to come out of it. We are able to see that unless there is harmony in the imagination of the self, there is no happiness. But how to ensure this harmony in the imagination? That would mean how to ensure the definiteness of imagination. And this is possible only, only by ensuring the higher level activities getting activated. So I can see that there is provision for fulfillment of these definite desires in the nature. This leads to a feeling of satisfaction or contentment. So with the realization, understanding and contemplation, when the desires get definite, then we are able to see that the existence is already in coexistence, the nature is already in harmony, and my role is very much definite. Only that I have to contemplate it, only that I have to see this, and then I am in a state of satisfaction or contentment because my desires now are definite. They are no longer enslaved by something from outside. I'm not trying to ensure happiness in me by borrowing something from outside, but rather I'm innately happy. And thus my desires are also definite. So try to see whether this is desirable or not. Are you able to contemplate your participation in the larger order? 
so talking about the family are you able to see your role in the family very clearly with definiteness are you able to see your role in the society in the organization where you are working or going to work in the nature if not then you have to work for the contemplation you have to work to get this activity activated now talking about understanding so understanding essentially is of harmony that is the self organization that is the innateness in the nature and all units in nature can be classified into four orders as we saw these units and the four orders have definite innateness or self organization which can be understood this definiteness which is born out of understanding leads to a feeling of bliss when i understand this i am determined to live with my self organization my innateness my harmony and i facilitate the self organization of other units so again he can verify this for yourself again you can look into this so when i am able to have definiteness in my desires based on contemplation i feel satisfied contented similarly when i am able to ensure the understanding of the innateness of all these four orders then i am in a state of bliss so i have been talking about these words satisfaction bliss but we have to understand what do they really mean how does it get ensured in the self and would you like to be in this state of bliss or not what do you think would you like to be in the state of bliss and if yes then this is something that i have to work for that you have to work for if yes then we have to work for this isn't it now talking about realization so realization is of coexistence something that we had briefly discussed earlier that existence is coexistence which is in the form of units submerged in space so the space which is all pervading unlimited the units are there limited in size the space is no activity the units are active and the units are an activity as well as active with other units and when i am able to see that every unit in the nature is energized being in space self organized in space and exists in a definite order and it recognizes its relationship with every other unit and fulfills the relationship being in space then this is something that is called as realization when i am able to see this now coming to realization the realization is there of coexistence if you look at the existence existence is there as coexistence which is in the form of units submerged in space so going through this process of self exploration i am able to come to a stage when i am able to see the complete nature submerged in space a space is there which is all pervading unlimited in size no activity every unit in the nature being an activity within oneself and being active with other units every unit of the nature being active within itself and active with other units limited in size and when i am able to see that being in space every unit in the nature is energized self organized that is exists in a definite order and recognizes its relationship with other units and fulfills the relationship being in space then this is called as realization so going through the process of self exploration i am able to come to a state when i am able to see the entire nature submerged in space now this when seen in the case of the self as a unit i am able to see that i am a unit of consciousness in space so i am a unit the self is a unit the body is also a unit i am limited in size the body is also limited in size i am active the body is also active i am different from the body so i am there in space and i am a unit of consciousness i am energized every moment being in space and there are activities of desire thought expectation in me which are continuous in me so every activity of the self is continuous being in space i can also see that i am self organized being in space that is i exist in a definite order now how do i see this that i exist in a definite order so you'll see that the moment i have any thought or feeling of opposition i feel unhappy so there is natural acceptance in me whether i am able to live with a feeling of relationship or not that natural acceptance is already there in me and that is being in a definite order the moment i have my imagination deviating from my natural acceptance i feel restless i feel unhappy and when my imagination is guided by my natural acceptance that is the higher activity of the self i feel happy i feel fulfilled so i am self organized 
being in space, isn't it? And I can recognize my relationship with other units and fulfill it. When I do, I feel happy. When I do not, I feel unhappy. This is something that you can observe again. So it is very much definite. The moment I'm able to observe my relationship with other units of the nature with definiteness, I feel happy. And when I'm not able to do that, I feel unhappy. So I am energized, I am self-organized, and I recognize the relationship with other units in the nature. And this is already there in me, only that I have to see this. And with this realization, I live with authenticity in continuity. So this authenticity comes naturally when I'm able to realize the whole existence as coexistence. Now, looking at the activities of the self, we are able to see that the content of contemplation is clarity of relationship. That is natural characteristic, that is participation in the larger order. Now, looking at the higher level activities of the self, we can see that the content of contemplation is the clarity of relationship. That is the natural characteristic, that is the participation in the larger order. The content of understanding is the clarity of harmony in the nature, that is the self organization, that is the innateness. And the content of realization is the clarity of coexistence in existence, that is the submergence. These are the high level activities. Now, the moment I have the realization, I have the authentication of the realization taking place in me. And this completes the understanding. So as we go along exploring, we are able to contemplate partly, we are able to understand partly. And then comes a stage when I'm able to realize the whole existence as coexistence. And that gets authenticated by completeness of understanding in me. With the completeness of understanding in me, there's determination in me to organize all the lower level activities. And the contemplation which was taking place partly in me gets completed with that. So with this, the higher level activities get developed and then they guide the lower level activities. And this is what is desired, that the higher level activities guide the lower level activities Unless this happens, there will be contradiction, confusion, restlessness, lack of harmony in the lower level activities of block B2. And then that will reflect in our behavior, work and participation in the larger order. So the same thing written over here, clarity of coexistence in existence, that is submergence is to be ensured with realization. Clarity of harmony in the nature, that is self-organization, that is innateness to be ensured through understanding. And clarity of relationship, that is natural characteristic, that is participation in the larger order is to be ensured with contemplation. Now, when we have this coexistence, harmony and contemplation ensured, then they guide the lower level activities. And then we we'll see that the various bases of comparing in the self get definite. So the basis of comparing uh, uh, through senses. So the three bases of comparing that we will discuss further, uh, that is through senses or health or profit, they, they get guided by coexistence, harmony and justice. We'll understand this uh, in detail in the next lecture. Similarly, the at the level of testing, the coexistence, harmony and justice guide the sensation part. And when this happens, then the same thing reflects in my behavior, work, and participation. In behavior, I'm able to ensure mutual happiness. In work, I'm able to ensure the mutual prosperity with the rest of nature. And in participation in the larger order, I'm able to work for undivided society, universal human order leading to human tradition. So we'll keep on repeating this because essentially we have to see how this gets done. So how the higher level activities guide the lower level activities Okay, so that there is harmony in the self, so that there is continuity of happiness in the self. So now we'll briefly recap steps five, six, and seven of exercise one. So in step four of exercise one, we have seen that ultimately it is I myself who is taking the decisions about my feelings. So we are able to see that the self is responsible for the feelings that is there in the self. It is nothing outside the self, isn't it? This is something that we concluded in step four of exercise one. Now in step five, we see that this decision about the feelings for any particular reality, say a human being, is on the basis of our understanding of that reality or in the absence of understanding, that is our assumption about the reality. So if I understand the human being as it is, 
then the decisions about the feelings about a human being will be based on that understanding. But if I do not understand a human being, then my decision would be misguided through assumption about the human being, isn't it? And we can also see that natural acceptance is rooted in these three higher attributes of the self. So whether I understand it or not, I naturally accept relationship. I naturally accept harmony. I naturally accept coexistence. So that natural acceptance is already there in me. Whether I'm able to see this clearly or not. If I'm able to see this clearly, then I have the understanding of the reality. If I'm not able to see the reality, then I am preconditioned about it. I have some assumption about it. So in step 6a, we are investigating what is naturally acceptable to us. Now, once we are able to see that the decision is being taken by me, then we are trying to investigate the basis of the decision making, whether it is my understanding or the absence of understanding. And then we are trying to investigate within us what is the natural acceptance, whether it is for the feeling of relationship or opposition, whether it is for harmony or disharmony, whether it is for coexistence or struggle. And as the feelings of relationship, harmony and coexistence are naturally acceptable, we are trying to understand them in 6B. So in 6A, we are questioning ourselves, what is naturally acceptable to us? And in step 6B, once we are able to see that this is our natural acceptance, that is the feeling of relationship, harmony and coexistence, we are trying to understand them in the next, that is step 6B. So understanding relationship means to see our relationship with every other unit of the existence and to fulfill that relationship and to fulfill that responsibility in that relationship. Understanding harmony means to see that continuous happiness is our innateness. Understanding coexistence means to be able to see that I, the self, am in coexistence in space, am submerged in the space, and so is every unit in the nature. Now, this is something that I try to ensure in 6B. So I try to understand relationship. I try to understand harmony. I try to understand coexistence. Now, in the next few slides, we'll again have a recap of steps 5, 6, and 7. So in step 6A, we are investigating what is naturally acceptable to us, relationship or opposition, harmony or disharmony, coexistence or struggle. In step 6B, we are trying to understand this. That is the relationship, harmony, and coexistence. In step seven, we are trying to ensure that the feeling that I have at this moment is in line with relationship, harmony, and coexistence. This ensures my happiness and continuity. So whatever I have within me, I'm trying to ensure that this is in line with relationship, harmony, and coexistence. So the decisions that I'm taking in my interaction with the human being, with the rest of nature, I'm trying to ensure that this is every time guided by this understanding of relationship, harmony, and coexistence. And the step six and seven constitute the major part of this course. So if you look at this course, we are trying to ultimately explore the reality. We are trying to awaken to the activities of contemplation, understanding, and realization. So ultimately, we are trying to ensure the feelings of relationship, harmony, and coexistence. So in step five, I am finding out the basis on which I decide my feeling, my thought in relation with any particular reality. So I try to see whether it is right understanding of the reality or it is some assumption in the absence of right understanding. So this is something that I'm doing in step five. When I decide my feeling thought on the base of right understanding, I'm able to decide in favor of a feeling that is naturally acceptable to me, which is natural. And then I remain comfortable in harmony in a state of happiness within. When I decide my feeling or thought on the base of assumption, some preconditioning, it is not definite which feeling I decide for. A feeling which is naturally acceptable to me or some otherwise feeling. It will depend on the assumption. With this, my state is indefinite, comfortable or uncomfortable at times, in harmony or in contradiction at times, in a state of happiness or unhappiness at times. So when it is misguided through some assumption, which is not in line with my understanding of relationship, harmony, and coexistence, then there is no definiteness in the feeling. It may be either for relationship or it could be either for opposition. It could be for disharmony or disharmony. There is no definiteness. And that essentially leads to indefiniteness of conduct also. 
Now, from this, I can see that there is a need for right understanding in me, and the need for deciding my feeling thought on the basis of right understanding, independent of whether things outside are fine or not fine. So, with this, I am able to see that ultimately I have to understand. Ultimately, I have to ensure right understanding in me. Unless I understand this, my imagination, my feelings, my thoughts are not going to be definite. My conduct is not going to be definite, and I am not going to continue with a state of happiness. So I'm able to decide this for me that I have to understand. This is something that gets accomplished in step five. Now the same thing written here with a little more clarity of the self. So desire that is feeling when it is decided on the basis of block B one that is right understanding, then it is natural and definite. But when it is based on some assumption, some preconditioning, or enslaved by sensation, then it is indefinite, and it is also not natural. it is also not assuring it is also not fulfilling now coming to step 6 we are able to see that natural feelings are there based on right understanding so it is important to understand the feelings that are natural for me the feelings that i want in continuity so let us ask ourselves as to which feelings are natural to me is it the feeling of relationship or feeling of opposition the feeling of harmony or the feeling of disharmony feeling of coexistence or the feeling of struggle and then by asking myself i am able to conclude that the feelings that are natural for me the feeling that i want in continuity are the feeling of relationship now this is something that you might feel that it is but obvious we have been saying it time and again but when you study your feelings you study your thoughts your imagination you are able to see that not every time you are able to see this clearly and that's how you have the feeling of opposition that's how you have the feeling of disharmony and that may continue for hours and days and months together why is that happening so at the level of thought we are able to say that yes this is acceptable to me naturally but i am not able to see this very clearly for me and that decision making is required that ultimately this is what is acceptable to me naturally this is only which will ensure happiness in me unless i am able to see this without any dilemma any confusion any contradiction without any doubt i do not work for it and i may feel that i have been exploring within me but the transformation is not taking place and that is because i have not been able to decide for myself that this is what is going to be my program and that's how this is so much important so here in step 6 we are able to decide that yes i need to ensure the right understanding that is understanding of relationship harmony and coexistence and i need to awaken to the activities of contemplation understanding and realization so that i can contemplate on natural characteristics so that i can understand the innateness so that i can realize the coexistence so that need is decided here in step 6 now so step 6 is done in two parts in 6a i am verifying that feelings that are natural to me are the feeling of relationship harmony and coexistence and not otherwise and in step 6b i am trying to ensure this that it continues in me so in 6a i am deciding what is acceptable to me naturally in 6b i am trying to ensure that this continues in me that this gets stated in me isn't it now in step 7 i am trying to ensure that my feelings are based on relationship harmony coexistence every moment so once i am clear that it is the feeling of relationship harmony and coexistence that is natural for me and this lead to the state of harmony and happiness then all that i need to do is to ensure that the feeling that i have at this moment is in line with relationship harmony and coexistence so in step 7 we are trying to ensure that this gets there in me every moment in step 6 we decided that i have to understand this in step 7 in step 7 we are trying to ensure that my complete imagination is guided by this understanding of relationship harmony and coexistence and the same will reflect in my behavior work and participation so by ensuring this feeling every moment i will be in a state of harmony and therefore happiness at this moment the next moment and every moment and that essentially means that i am going in a i am going to be in the state of continuity of happiness so we began by saying that what we essentially aspire for is continuity of happiness but for that i have to do this much of task i have to do this much of work so if you look at this we are trying to work intensively on the self in this particular course trying to develop the higher activity of the self trying to see the reality through direct observation 
So we took the proposal, we started verifying, and now we have come to a state where we would like to directly observe the reality. So this is the way it is. Now, when I'm able to ensure that I have the clarity of relationship, harmony, and coexistence, and block B1 gets activated, then block B2 is completely guided by block B1. And then that reflects my behavior, work, and participation in the larger order. I behave with human beings, and that ensures mutual happiness. I work with the rest of nature, ensuring mutual prosperity. And I participate in the larger order, ensuring fulfillment of human goal. Now my competence to ensure mutual happiness in my mutual relations becomes the building block of an undivided society. And my competence to participate for the fulfillment of human goal becomes the building block of universal human order. And when it goes from generation to generation, it becomes the human tradition. So this is the evolution that is taking place in me. So as we go on doing the steps one to seven of exercise one, then in that process, we are able to develop the higher activities of the self. And at every step, we'll have a lot of things to explore, investigate. In brief, we are only delivering this to you. We are sharing this with you, but you can make a note of all that you are able to see in every step of exercise one and exercise two. So the same thing written over here, something that we discussed earlier. Now the same thing again shown here. So looking at the complete development that takes place through realization of coexistence and how it expresses in terms of universal human order. So it appears like this. So it comes like this. So within me, I'm able to realize coexistence and in expression, it goes up to universal human order that forms the human tradition. Now, the more I'm able to work within me to develop the higher level activities, the more I'm able to participate harmoniously in the larger order. So these are two ends. So within me, I'm able to reach the state of realization and in my expression, I'm able to participate in universal human order. The more I work to develop the self, the more I'm able to participate harmoniously in the universal human order. And this is the way the human evolution has to take place. This is the way each one of us needs to evolve. The more I'm able to work on the development of the self, the more I'm able to participate in universal human order for human tradition. And that would mean that I'm able to work for the mutual happiness and mutual prosperity in every relation. I'm able to work for systems and society, which will ensure harmony in the society, which will ensure harmony in the nature. So there is a realization within, and then there's expression outside. You can observe within yourself whether you are able to see this, that the more you are able to work for realization within, the more it expresses outside very naturally. So for example, if I'm able to see my participation with human being, I'm able to ensure harmony in my family. When I'm able to see the feelings very clearly with every human being, I'm able to work for undivided society. Similarly, when I'm able to see the harm in the nature, I'm not able to only ensure orderliness in my family, but I'm able to work for universal human order. So the way I am progressing within me towards realization, in a similar way, I'm able to participate in the larger order meaningfully. And these are the two ends which have to be ensured. Now, this understanding of harmony in the nature, its completeness ensures bliss in me. This essentially means that I am able to understand the harmony among all the four orders of nature in completeness. Satisfaction means that I am able to see the participation in the larger order in relationship and thus my desires get definite. Now when my desires get definite, then my thoughts get definite. Definiteness in thoughts ensures peace in me. And then whatever activity in terms of comparing is taking place in me, it is always guided by the right understanding. At the level of expectation, when my selections get definite, because my testing is now guided by coexistence, harmony, and justice, then it ensures happiness in continuity in me. Now, put this all together, that is bliss, satisfaction, peace, and happiness, it is called as continuity of happiness. To ensure continuity of happiness, I have to ensure all these four. And the same thing will express outside, isn't it? So if I'm at peace within, 
I am behaving with peace with other human being. If I am satisfied within, I am interacting with every other human being and the rest of nature with satisfaction within. If I am happy within me, then I am also able to ensure happiness in other human beings. So it will ensure my expression outside. So when we were discussing the parts of resolution, so we had seen that 3.1 is right understanding and that essentially means ensuring realization, understanding and contemplation. 3.2 is the wisdom and that gets accomplished at the level of desire. 3.3 is the science which gets accomplished in the imagination. Based on that, I'm able to ensure mutually fulfilling behavior and work and participation in the larger order, which are there at 3.4, 3.5 and 3.6. And at 3.7, I have the clarity of undivided society and then universal human order and human tradition. So this is something that we discussed when we were talking about resolution. And we could also see that the content of right understanding is to ensure these nine things, that is contemplation of the participation of the four orders, understanding of the innateness of the four orders and realization of the coexistence. So these are the nine things to be ensured in terms of developing the higher activities of the self. Now, as your homework in this lecture, you have to investigate into your natural characteristic. That is, is it for being in relationship? That is, what are the feelings in relation that you naturally accept? You have to investigate into your innateness, that is being in harmony, being in a state of happiness. You have to investigate into your coexistence. You have to investigate into coexistence, that is being in coexistence, that is being submerged in space. So it may not be that you are able to see this quite clearly, but at least you can start investigating this. And you also have to write in your own words, what do you understand by bliss, satisfaction, peace, happiness? And then investigate into your state in terms of each of these. What is your current state? Are you able to ensure happiness? Are you able to ensure peace? Are you able to ensure satisfaction and bliss? So that will help you make a right evaluation of the current state of your development of the self. So in this lecture, we talked about the higher activities of the self. And we also tried to relate the higher activities of the self with the exercise one. We looked into the steps five, six, and seven of exercise one. And we also saw the meaning of happiness, peace, satisfaction, and bliss. In the next lectures, we are going to understand how the higher level activities guide the lower level activities. So this is all for the lecture today. Thank you.